Hey everybody, welcome to the Dark Matter Knits podcast. I'm Elizabeth Green Musselman. It is March 13th, 2015, and this is episode 27, What's Your Bag? Take two. <laughs> Oi. Recording a video podcast is a challenge, in case you haven't. <laughs> if you are a fan of video podcasts, you know this to be true, because you will have heard us whining about this before. I recorded, as you may know, I recorded this podcast episode last week, last Friday, and uh, got it all uploaded to iTunes and uh, and YouTube, and then I got some emails or some messages from people saying that, uh, yeah, about four and a half minutes in, the sound cuts out. So, unfortunately, I didn't have any time to re-record at the, at the time. So, it actually works out okay. The silver lining is that I cannot record next Friday anyway because I'm going to be on the road for DFW Fiberfest. So, you know, since I record every two weeks anyway, re-recording today, I'll miss next week. It'll... It's all fine. Uh, all right, so let's try this again. This time, with extra feeling. <laughs> so I have some thank yous to, which the, no trouble mustering up the extra feeling for this one. I have some thank yous this week. A number of you, or a couple of you, have made some very generous donations to the podcast, for which I am extremely grateful. Uh, one of you, Kate, said it was okay to use her name, and the other person wished to remain anonymous. Um, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. And... Uh, the donations have actually gotten to the point where they're not just covering hosting fees and mailing out prizes, but I actually think I'm going to be able to save up for a real video camera so that I don't have to keep using my phone. <laughs> so that's awfully nice. And uh, yeah, really looking forward to trying that out. Um, I also uh, have a giveaway to... Um, to follow up on, and that is the Harmonized Pattern by Christine Beeson, which you may remember from last time. A really gorgeous uh, feather and fan style cowl that comes in two different lengths, one long enough that you can wrap it a couple of times, and the other one that's, you know, a nor nice short around the neck cowl. And uh, Christine, who is the host of the Yarnings podcast, which I really love, is uh, was kind enough to to allow us to give away a copy on the podcast. So, in the last episode, I said if you wanted to enter the giveaway, answer the question that she posed, which I love. Uh, tell us about a combination that harmonizes that you didn't expect, like peanut butter and jelly being seemingly contrasting, but they work. And she gave some other examples like board games and knitting, laced weight, lace weight and a tunic length garment, raindrops and flowers. Now, you really should go look at the thread for this because especially if you like food, there are some really interesting suggestions for food combinations, including chili and chocolate. Love. Um, what were some of the other ones? Now, see, I looked at this before the last recording and now I'm blanking on what some of them were, but they're, some of them are questionable. I got to say, I believe there was a banana and mayonnaise one. Ooh, that just gave me the shivers when I read that one. <laughs> However, I have not tried it. So, you know, I will, I will reserve judgment. I will shiver, but I will reserve judgment. But the winner was post number five. I did the drawing beforehand. And uh, her Ravelry name is Blecky. She doesn't, <laughs> I love that, Blecky. She doesn't give her uh, actual name on her profile page, but she is from DePaul, Indiana. And she gave the answer cocoa in, cocoa powder, I'm presuming, in chili, which is a delicious combination. I also like chili powder in chocolate. That is also delicious. So Blecky, I have, um, you actually probably have already received your pattern because I let Christine know, in fact, I'm sure you have, because I let Christine know after I recorded last time, assuming that you all would be able to see this, that you had won. So you probably already know this, but there it is. So uh, what I've been up to this week, uh, we have spring break coming up here and it is definitely warming up. Uh, it doesn't ever get really all that cold here. I live in, in Texas, but um, 
you know, it's, you can definitely see the signs of spring, the, the little flowering trees are starting to flower and the, uh, the wildflowers are starting to pop up. Just the, the leafy parts are starting to pop up. The actual flowers haven't come out yet. Um, my son and my husband both have spring break. My husband's a teacher and, uh, my son obviously is in school and, uh, they are, <laughs> my son is, he's 10. He is adamant about suddenly he just really, really wants, he's very entrepreneurial all of a sudden. Gee, I wonder where he gets it from. Uh, so he has decided to start a pet care business and has actually done quite well. He's posted a bunch of flyers around the neighborhood. The flyers are hilarious. He wrote them all himself. And, uh, we did a little bit of editing just, you know, to kind of on his pricing and stuff like that, but we didn't edit out the, the charming kidliness of the syntax. <laughs> My favorite part is where he talks about, he will not, he cannot walk gnarly dogs because he needs to be home for supper. So all of you people with gnarly dogs, forget it. He is not walking your gnarly dog because he needs to be home for his next meal. So my child. So yeah, he's been, uh, he has a couple of pet sitting jobs while people are away for spring break. And he has a dog walking job with this poor, oh my goodness. Uh, it's an elderly woman who owns the dog and the dog is, I don't, I'm not sure he's really that old. He's probably nine or 10 years old. He's not, doesn't have that grizzled muzzle, you know, the gray around the, but he has really bad hip dysplasia. And that's where a lot of big dogs get this. He's a black lab, I think I mentioned. And uh, it's where the, I think it's where the, um, the cartilage in there that holds their back legs to their hip bones starts to disintegrate. And it's, it's very, very painful. Um, the dog doesn't complain at all, but his back legs swing and wobble as he walks. And it's just, oh, it's just the saddest thing. He can only make it about half a block and then he's just, he is done. Buddy is his name. So yeah, we have lots of pet care going on. And as we speak in the other room, there is a rodent we are also taking care of the class pet, the fifth grade class pet, Sir Fluffy, uh, who is a guinea pig. And uh, he is terrified of me. I don't know if I just make too many sudden movements or if he's just not familiar with my scent or what. But every time I go by, maybe it's because it's quiet in the house when it's just me. And so, you know, I'm disrupting that general quiet. But th that thing jumps every time I go by. It is it's, it's funny. So yeah. And next weekend I will, as I say, be at DFW Fiberfest. So I am really, really looking forward to that. And if you will be there, uh, I will, I am traveling up on Friday morning with the lovely Jeanette of the Bookish Stitcher podcast. And I'm really happy about, about that because to get to to spend some time with her because we haven't ever, ever met in person before, but I love her podcast. I think she's just, uh, a wonderfully sweet and smart person. And I, yeah, I'm just looking forward to being able to spend some time with her. And, uh, and then I will be not really quite sure what I'm doing on Friday, probably just walking around the market, knitting, hanging out with people. And then on Saturday, I am probably, I am going to be helping out, uh, Anne Podlesack in the Wooly Wonka Fibers booth. So, uh, and then Sunday, heading back home again. So hope to see at least a couple of you there. There will be a podcaster meetup, I believe at one o'clock on Saturday. There's a, if you go to the DFW Fiberfest group on Ravelry, there is a thread that gives the time and the place for that, but it's out in the main uh, lobby in front of the market. So that's what's going on here. Now, when I recorded my podcast, this was a UFO, or not a UFO, but a work in progress. Now, it's a faux, a finished object. Here, let me see if I can tilt this a little better so you can see. If I tilt it too much, then you're in danger of falling, which is no good. Uh, so this, I love it. <laughs> so funny, I am not, I'll get to the details in a moment. <laughs> I am not normally a blue person. I am mm, just... Well, I know it's like jewel tones week here. 
I am not normally a blue person. I bought this yarn because I was originally going to make something for my sister and then I made it for me. <laughs> normally like warm colors, but uh, I really, really love this. So this is, I'll go ahead and take it off so I can show it to you. This is a certain slant shawl pattern by uh, Stitch Nerd Designs and uh, quite, a, quite a popular pattern because it is it works really well with gradients. I'm sure it would work really well with hand spun. It's just a simple, um, easily memorized stitch pattern. I mean, it's basically mostly stockinette with the occasional pearl row thrown in. It's really easy to remember and to see when the increases are supposed to happen. And you can make it as big or as small as you want. I mean, you really can just kind of the nice thing is the pattern gives you instructions uh, such that you can stop anywhere and then make the uh, the edging work out. So, um, so that's really cool because it makes it a very flexible pattern. Now the yarn I used is uh, also by Wooly Wonka Fibers. It's a, the main part of the shawl, so up to the border is a what she calls a transition skein set. So it's not technically a gradient. It was actually four mini skeins. Uh, so all together it was 400 yards of, of fingering weight. So the same weight as a, a regular sock skein, but broken up into four different colors. And I think you can pretty easily see where those colors stop and start. So they're coordinating, but they're not technically a gradient, but it does have that effect since they're you know, they're all blues. Um, and I thought it was really interesting actually to see, I mean, notice that the first, each one of these skeins was the same length, but look how much wider, I just think that optical effect is really interesting of how much wider this is just because, you know, it's the, the rows were shorter. It was much, the, much more dramatic. The dwindling down of the of the width of those of those stripes as it goes along um and then i decided i mean i could have done this shawl just with the transition skein set and, and by the way this is um the base that this is in because she does the transition skeins in different bases and the base that this is in is ceridwin i think that's how you pronounce it ceridwin sock it's basically a um Hang on, I think it's 100% merino, which was part of my decision to make this as a shawl. Uh, yeah, it's 100% merino, so you know, not as uh, better for shawls than socks, honestly, just because there's no nylon to keep it from shredding. Um, where was I going with this? Yeah, so I decided I didn't really. It you really need about half. And you really need about 200 yards of the. Uh, to, to make the edging. And I didn't want to, it would have meant, see where the dark, that second blue, there's like the darkest blue, like an indigo, and then there's that next dark blue. I would have had to stop there to make the edging, and I didn't really want to do that. So I decided to just go ahead and play out all 400 yards of the transition skeins, and then I just ordered a second, just like a regular, skein of Ceridwin sock from her in the Fathom colorway. So Rolling in the Deep is the transition skein and then Fathom is the edging. And I really, really love how this came out. I love that it's big and I mean, I'm, I'm five foot 10, you know, I need, and I'm not a small person anyway, so I need something that's a little more, it just looks out of proportion if it's too small. Shawlette is not, <laughs> not my thing. Um, so yeah, I and I tend to wear shawls kind of scarf-like anyway, so I like it when they can, you know, really kind of plump up around you. So yeah, I just love it. I've been wearing it a lot as it's just kind of the perfect thing for this time of year. Um, so yeah, I think that's... Oh, I guess the only other thing I wanted to say about it is that one of the things that's kind of nice about this shawl is you don't even have to block it. Once when it, I haven't blocked it yet. It's just came out looking looking nice from from moment one, which was pretty fabulous. 
so that's what I've been knitting. I've also been doing, you know, as usual, some uh, secret knitting, design knitting, but can't show you that now. Except I can show you some secret knitting that I was doing before that I'm now done with and the pattern's out. <laughs> So this uh, is something that I had been working on for most of January and a little bit of February. And uh, it is my uh, Balinese Cardi, which I designed out of Knit Circus, oh my goodness, Opulence, Knit Circus Opulence. Also, it's like great gradient week here at uh, Dark Matter Knits. Um, but she has these gorgeous... Uh, gradient sock kits that um, that's what the sleeves are done in so it starts with this really pale peach color and then goes into this hot pink and then up into kind of a pale uh, lavender color and um, I think it's eat pray eat pray knit is the the name of this colorway and then she's got a coordinating solid in the same base that's this grapey purple color and I just, I loved working with it. It's a merino silk cashmere blend. <laughs> right. And uh, it's fingering weight. So you can, I mean, it took a while, but I really, really love it. <laughs> In fact, I decided, I was so excited about this design that I was like, okay, normally I would make a smaller a medium, especially for a fingering weight sweater. But I was like, I want, I want this sweater. So I made the extra large. And, uh, and it fits me perfectly. I just love it. Um, so basically what you do is you start, you start with the sleeves and depending on the size you make, the arrangement of the colors will be a little different just because you start with the sleeves and you basically use up all of the gradient. The idea is to use as much of it as possible. So for most of the sizes, I think really all of them, you're going to finish the sleeves and still have some of the gradient left. So you stop at the armholes with still with some gradient left. Then you go back and you make the fronts and the back and the fronts hang lower than the back. The fronts hang almost to, well, they hang to mid thigh and then the back hangs down to mid hip. So then you move. <laughs> I grabbed you inappropriately there. Um, <laughs> so you make the backs, in the backs in the front up to the armholes, and then you uh, you start in with the the gradient again and work. You join the yoke, you join the the front, the sleeves, the back, the sleeve, the front, all into a yoke. Work that back and forth in the gradient, and then when you run out of that, which I did right at the end, then uh, you go back to the main color and work the collar. So I knit the extra large. For any sizes smaller than that, you will likely not run out of the gradient before you finish the top of the sweater. Uh, for any sizes that are larger than extra large, you're going to have a little bit more of your yoke worked in the main color. So that's pretty much how it, it works out. But um, yeah, I, I really, really enjoyed working with her yarn. And in fact, uh, she made a, did a really nice deal with me where basically uh, I've, she gave me a, a shipping code to put into my pattern. So if you get the pattern, the shipping code is in there, which gives you free shipping on uh, the yarn to make this pattern. So that was especially nice. I also uh, worked on, I just released a cowl and mitts pattern in the woolen rabbit yarns. And this came about because, I, I don't have the sample here to show you because I had sent it off to Anne to be photographed. Um, but let me see if I still have it. Sorry, I was a little better prepared last time when I <laughs> recorded this and now I am. Yeah, I'm a slacker. So let me, uh, let me see if I can get that up for you. So basically the story here was that um, Anne and I, with the, this new business that we're doing, Stitch Definition, we want to be able to 
um, not just work with knitwear designers, but also dyers. So we're doing photography, graphic design, and editing really for anybody in the fiber industry. And, um, and what we want to do, be able to do for dyers is, you know, all kinds of smaller jobs, like, you know, I can do yarn labels and logos and, um, she can do photography on products and all that kind of thing. Um, but we also wanted to offer some bigger options where let's say you're a dyer and, uh, you really want to see more patterns in your yarn, but, um, you know, a lot of indie dyers are one person, two person shops. There's not really a lot of time to be putting together a whole pattern collection. So basically we can take care of all of that. So, you know, we'll find the designers, we'll talk to you about what you're looking for, what yarn bases you want to use, um, have the designers put together a collection that reflects what you, you know, want to see. And we'll get it all photographed and edited and laid out and printed if you want so that you know, you can have these finished patterns in your yarns. So this, what this uh, cowl and mitt set that I did was kind of a test run on that concept. And um, Kim Caslow at the Woolen Rabbit sent us, sent Anne and I some yarns, since we're both knitwear designers, we were kind of testing this out. Um, it won't always be us doing the designing, but, you know, like I said, test run. So I did a cowl and mitt set that... Um, has a leaf lace pattern that you know kind of runs up the arm and down the thumb and then the same leaf lace runs around the cowl and it's knit flat and buttoned so that you can either wear it as it a scarf or wear it wrapped once twice three times around the neck so here it is as a scarf for example um, and here you can kind of see the leaf lace traveling up the thumb. And then uh, Anne did this really gorgeous shawl pattern in the same yarn but in two colors. And uh, and we like, you know, got them all photographed. This, this is Anne, you know, kind of directing the photo shoot and um, I did, well, we each did some layout. And so, yeah, it was very cool to, to be able to work on that. And we're working on some other collections with a couple of other dyers. So that is pretty cool. And that I, I got to tell you, the whole stitch definition thing is just, it's one of the reasons why I had such a hard time re-recording for this week is that it's been, it's been busy. It's going really, really well, which I'm happy about, uh, but just, yeah, a little frantic. Um, okay, so the other thing I wanted to, there are two other things I wanted to talk to you about this week. Uh, one of them is that I have a, a kind, it's, I should, I was going to say review, but it's more of a preview, actually, mostly a preview of a collection that Natalie Servant, who is a knitting designer, has started putting out. So I'll talk about that in just a second. And then the second thing I want to talk about is um, kind of a combination technique segment slash other things. We're going to look at what's in our notions bags. I'm going to show you what's in mine, and then I'll open up a thread asking you what's in yours. Um, so, but first, the preview. So Natalie Servant, who is a knitwear designer, contacted me and asked if I would like to do a, a preview and giveaway of her new knitwear collection, which is called uh, Canadian Art Deco Knits. And I've actually... She had shown me some pictures of this at Rhinebeck last year, and so I was really excited that she contacted me about this because this is a kind of lookbook. Not all the patterns are out yet. Um, but yeah, I just, I was really excited that she contacted me because it's a really, it's a, it's a really cool concept and the patterns are lovely. So the idea is um, she has each, mo each month Natalie is going to be releasing one of the patterns. There are 12 patterns and um, they're being released month by month. Um, so here's what she says about the inspiration behind it and how it's organized. She says that my first shawls were inspired by Art Deco structures in Paris and New York. I love Art Deco details and I had the idea to look for inspiration a little closer to home in Canada. For the last few years, I've been visiting Canadian Art Deco buildings taking pictures and using those pictures for inspiration for my designs. 
Um, she says she's releasing it as a subscription ebook for 2015. Each month, subscribers get a new pattern inspired by details from a Canadian Art Deco building. Each pattern includes some background on the building or the architect that inspired the design. So when it's finished, the ebook will have 12 designs in it, four lace shawls, two double knitting projects, a hat and a scarf, one textured scarf, and five colorwork projects, which include a Fair Isle hat, a stranded cushion, stranded mittens, rositude, ro rositude, it's R-O-O-S-I-T-U-D, rositude mittens, and hat, and a stranded cowl. So the lookbook gives you a preview of each of these patterns, and they're in order. So three of these are out already because it's March. Uh, the first that is out, so there's a picture, he's got a picture here of the inspiration and then a close-up of the piece. This is a shawl that is inspired by grill work inside the Pavilion, Pavilion Roger Gondry in Montreal. Isn't that cool? I love the way... One of the things I like about this is it's not just the outside of buildings, but she's also taken some architectural details, from in, in, including some unexpected ones from inside. Here is a, a scarf that would work for men and women that's inspired by that very simple masonry on the outside of this building in Toronto. That was February's. This month's, I love this one. This is a double knit scarf that is based on some stonework on a Montreal building. I just think that's such a handsome scarf. And you can imagine, I mean, she's photo in the pattern, she's photographed this on, um, on a man as a kind of dress scarf, but you can easily imagine this in different colors working just as well as a women's scarf. I think it's very attractive. Another one based on grill work will be April's pattern. Here's some of the color work. This is a uh, some columns, and she's taken the floral motif from the top and translated it into color work. Oops. A mittens and scarf set. A gorgeous cowl that's reversible based on the flooring, which I think is such a cool idea. She's taken the tile and translated it into a color work design. A chandelier that she's interpreted into a hat. Some more mittens based on a beautiful floral motif from another Montreal building. I love this little owl pillow based on those little gargoyle-like creatures on a bank in Toronto. And that's it. So that'll be December a great gift project. And uh, one of the nice things about this is that uh, Natalie has very kindly offered to give away a copy of the collection. So uh, my question that I'm going to pose to you in the giveaway thread on Ravelry is, what building or architectural style would you most want to see translated into a knitted design? And pictures are obviously encouraged. I know that's not necessarily an easy question to answer, but you know, come on, work for your price. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to pause this for a minute for two reasons. One, I need to go get my notions bag. And two, I would like to see if the audio has actually worked this time. <laughs> yeah. All right, be right back. Okay, I'm back. So I actually have two notions bags to show you. Uh, one of them is uh, one that I tend to carry when I'm, when I'm traveling and want something a little smaller and a little more, a little easier to control what gets in and out. Um, this one is kind of my little travel case, and it's actually, I got this at the Knitting Nest, which is a, an Austin yarn store that unfortunately just closed this week, but, um, uh, it's very clever. It's actually, I believe this was originally designed as a small tackle box for fishing, and in fact, if you go online and search for small tackle box, you will find a number of, uh, little containers that'll look a lot like this. And I just think it's very clever because you can snap open and shut each one of these little compartments. Now, what I tend to keep in here 
It's, there's a lot of stitch markers in here, which in some ways is not really necessary. I don't need that many <laughs> when I'm traveling. But uh, this functions both as a travel case and as a way to kind of keep my stitch markers sorted. So on this side, on this side it's all stitch markers. I've got some removable ones, you know, the kind of classic clover uh, removable ones. Um, I've got some, some nicer beaded markers up here. I've also got some needlepoint protectors, uh, which I don't really tend to use all that much, but especially for traveling, it's nice to have them to keep your stitches from sliding off the ends of the needle. I've got some uh, yarn needles for weaving in ends and some highlighter tape, which I'll show you, I'll show you some better highlighter tape I have in a moment. I just put this one in here uh, because it fits nicely into the case. And then on this side, I also have some waist yarn so that I can, mostly I use this for afterthought heels on socks. And I have a pair of, get out of there. I have a pair of those scissors that you can kind of open and close. And by the way, I don't know if you know this, but uh, in the US at least, the new rule is that you can bring scissors on a plane as long as the, the blades are less than two inches or two inches or less. So these kinds of scissors are actually perfectly fine to bring on board. Um, I have a little crochet hook that I can use. Mostly I use this for repairing or for picking up stitches, or I mean uh, fixing mistakes. Um, I even have this funny little, <laughs> one of my friends made this, I think this is so cool. It's a necklace that has Lego stitch markers on it. Well, it has one giant Lego on it, and then there are all these Lego stitch markers, like this one that came with it. <laughs> Isn't that a cool idea? I just love that. So yeah, I've got that over here, and I've also got a, uh, a paper clip, because I have those um, is it Knit Picks, Knit Pro, and Knitter's Pride are all... I think all manufactured in the same factory and they all use that uh, in order to tighten the needle tips onto the cables you need a you know a little there's a little hole that uh, is on the end and you can you need to stick a little they have a tool that comes with it but I just use I tend to lose them so I just have a paper clip in here you stick this into the hole and it kind of helps you tighten it a little better um, one of the really, so here's here's a tip, technique tip for you. One of the really cool things about those needles is that you can also use those for lifelines. So lifelines are where, they're often used in lace. You thread a, uh, I, use, I actually use dental floss. This is one of the things in my other knitter's kit. My Whenever my son gets one of these little tiny uh, floss things at the dentist, I take them and uh, use them as lifelines. He does floss his teeth, <laughs> just not with this crappy floss that comes from the dentist. Um, so lifelines are where you would thread a piece of yarn, or in this case dental floss, through a row of stitches so that if you mess up, you don't have to tink back or just you know tear it all out and run the risk of, like, it's just really hard to, to rip out lace because the, all those yarn overs and decreases, I mean, keeping them all straight and getting them back on the needles properly can be difficult. So um, the lifeline is nice because then you can just run a needle all the way through where that lifeline goes and then just rip it all back to a place that doesn't have an error and you're good to go. Anyways, back to the Knitter's Pride Knit Pro Knit Picks needle thing. Because they had that little hole in the... Uh, where the t needle tip gets screwed onto the cable, you can actually run a lifeline, like just stick it through that little hole as you work, and then as you work a row, it just automatically threads that floss or yarn through that row of stitches, and then you can just bloop, plop the, the end of the floss out of the needle again, and off you go. So you don't even have to thread it through. You just automatically thread it through by kind of knitting as you go if that makes sense. So that is my my little 
travel kit. And this is probably, I don't know, about four inches across, three inches tall. And then I also have, well, I have a Mondo travel kit that, or not a travel kit, Mondo notions bag that care, sort of holds all the stuff that I use infrequently. But this is my home bag. This one's about, probably about seven inches across. And I wanted to show you some of the stuff I have in here. I've got a little thing of post-it notes, always handy. This had a gift card in it originally from my favorite local bookstore. And it holds all my favorite stitch markers in it, including my, oh, I can't remember who made these, my little ninja stitch markers. If you go on Etsy and search for ninja stitch markers, her shop will come up because honestly, how many people make ninja stitch markers? So yeah, all my favorite ones are in there. I have obviously a couple of tape measures. I have, oh boy, nerd alert. If you are a book fan, you probably know about Levenger. I have these little uh, book tags, you know, that you can use to mark your place in a book. Highlighter tape, the thin, the thin stuff, which is my favorite. The cool thing about highlighter tape is um, it's a thin tape. Well, that didn't work. And now I have no idea where the end is. Uh, all right, well, anyway, it's a little thin tape that you can pull off and cut, and then you can put it on your pattern, on a chart or on, you know, wherever you are in the pattern. And it's got kind of, it's not, it's sticky, but it's not super sticky. So it's kind of like a post-it note in that you can pull it on and off of a pattern and keep your place. So I've got that in several different colors. Got to have a chibi. One of those little containers that holds your yarn needles. I actually got a couple of those. I've got one of these, a stitch gauge. This actually came with my Addy, Addy Turbo, um, interchangeable needle set and I really like this one because it has uh, it has those half sizes one and a half two and a half which a lot of the needle gauges don't have and it's also handy for spinners because you can use this as a wraps per inch tool it's got a little little inch measurements up at the top so that's pretty cool obviously have a little pair of scissors the dental floss many, many mechanical pencils. A little itty bitty highlighter. Size five, size five double points. No idea why I have these in here, but I'm putting them back because as soon as I take them out, I'm going to need them. <laughs> I have a couple of crochet hooks in here. Always handy. For all kinds of things. They're, they're great for Picking up stitches, they're great for uh, if you drop a stitch, you know, kind of laddering it back up again. They're great if you want to crochet, <laughs> obviously. Got some cable needles in here. I only tend to use these. I don't tend to cable. When I'm cabling, if it's a small cable, I do it without a cable needle, but some of them are big enough to need it. Um, anything else of interest? There was one other thing I saw in here. What was it? No, I think that might be it. Normally I have some uh, waste yarn in here too, but I seem to have uh, depleted my supply. So I'll have to put some more in there. But yeah, that's what's in my notions bag. And I'm curious to hear what you've got in yours. So I will, as I say in the discussion about this episode, I will ask you to uh, to share what's in yours pictures again always encouraged uh last thing that i meant, meant to mention at the beginning and i completely forgot is that we have a knit along going on in the dark matter knits group for my uh, blocare cap which is the um hold on it's this the hat that i designed for the knit picks spring accessories collection so there are 
it's this started on March 1st, the knit along, but it goes through April 15th. So if you would like to join and you haven't yet, you are most welcome to, and you will have plenty of time to finish. Some people have already finished theirs. Um, there's plenty of time. So it's five, five different colors of a sport weight yarn. And, um, the pattern can be purchased individually, but it's also part of a book. Um, it, one of the things I wanted to encourage you to do is go take a look at some of the color combinations that people have put together for the hat. It has made me want to knit this hat all over again because some of the some of the combinations you all have come up with are so wonderful. There's one that was inspired by that famous Mondrian painting, you know, the red, yellow, black, I mean, just very, very stark colors. And then some of you have gone, gone much more muted. Uh, there's one that's all in greens. There's one that's all in, you know, kind of coordinating jewel tones. So yeah, just really, really interesting to see what people have come up with. That's been really fun for me to watch. So please do come over and join us. And if you are li a listener of the actual knitting, ah, sorry, actually knitting podcast, uh, which is a wonderful podcast. Michelle is one of the people who's participating in the knit along and hers is a very pretty version of it. Um, I think she said on her most recent podcast that it took her longer to decide on the colors for the Blakari cap than it did for her to decide which college she wanted to go to, <laughs> which I thought was very funny. Uh, so yeah, please do come join the knit along and, um, I think that is all for this week. I will hope that this works this time. And uh, yeah, and I will see you again in a couple of weeks. Take care. Bye. Oh, wow. I am completely discombobulated. You can find me online as Dark Matter Knits on Ravelry, Instagram. Those are the places where you'll normally find me. Darkmatterknits.com. Dark Matter Knits everywhere. It's basically what I'm trying to say. Okay, that's really all.